Okay, so uh, Patrick and I are just hanging around in the shop today, and Patrick said, why don't we just go live? So here we are. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> hey, Rich. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, we have nothing to do today. Uh, I did this morning. I launched my, uh, well, the patrons had the video for a couple of days now, but I launched my video on auto welding text. And I just got some new wood in because I, I had run out of this. This uh, this is my last large piece of the uh, from the 17 inch prayer cross. So I had run out of this wood, which was uh, three millimeter plywood, some kind of plywood. And I wanted to do I've done a few of these in the last couple of days because last night was the Christmas concert right at church and I think we talked about it Patrick yep. uh, I had the worst experience happen last night uh, I've never used this camera that um, <laughs> um, uh, no worse than that Patrick never oh, no. used, I've never used this camera before except for live streams and um, when I got back Patrick and I got on a live I forget what we were we regularly meet like in private meetings on here and I couldn't figure out how to get that camera connected. I couldn't find the files on the SD card after two hours of recording the concert from three different angles with three different cameras. We had Norman Robinson, who is a local celebrity here, who was the narrator for the concert. Um, so I thought I was doing really well till I got home. Couldn't get the video files off. Finally figured out where they were in a hidden private folder on the SD card. Oh my! And goodness. then found out that this camera is not recording audio. <laughs> oh no! Yes. So the main camera yeah. that I so, depended on the audio from the other ones were only recording locally when I would do the records on them. So. Uh, little bits and pieces of audio on those cameras but this one the main camera did not record audio and i can't get the audio to work so that stinks yeah bad night last night <laughs> but i did get a bunch of these done uh for the uh choir members and i've just got a couple more that i need to get done that i'm going to send out to family and but i wanted to do them in 17 inch so Today, I got in my new wood, which is uh, 18 inches long, put it over on the laser. And let me just show you real quick. It didn't that actually. Is, that's didn't, uh, some impressive wood there, Rich. Yeah, it's three millimeter, too, which is exactly what I wanted. But um, if you look on there, <laughs> you'll see that it goes all the way off the edge of the honeycomb. So just a quick tip. Uh, I put some magnets underneath the top part up there where the module is right now to level it out so now the the entire thing is level and being that it stood off from the honeycomb there won't be any flash on there no flash burn whatsoever even though i really didn't have it before but um, that's what i'm going to be doing today just having fun doing that and uh Patrick, I don't know what yeah. Patrick's doing today, but he's he's playing around in the shop too. And we figured, hey, let's uh, let's just do this live instead of a private meeting. Because I've got uh, projects, three different lasers on tap. I've got fiber laser, CO two Galvo behind me, and the UV over there. Cool. And I need to use all three of them for three different jobs. Cool. So, so that's what uh, I'm that getting ready to do. So that's what we're doing. We're just hanging around. If you guys want to hang around with us, you're welcome to stay. <laughs> yep. And then I've got to prep a Glock for a stipple. I might start prepping it or try to answer, or if anybody has questions about uh, Glocks while I'm doing this first Glock that I got to do. HTL, I want to see. Nice. Yeah, the first Glock is... Uh, hey, Bob. Uh, Should be camera one. one. Don't know what happened to your earlier Two. chat. I think I just saw it. Yeah, I thought I saw it too. Javier uh, Gonzalez, hello. 
That is uh, a new name for me, I think. There's what I'm doing first. I'm gonna put a little text on the side of the slide. Oh, nice. Yeah, that sort of, uh, you know, that gets me a little nervous. I've got five guns waiting to get, <laughs> waiting to get uh, engraved or annealed, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, I've been putting it off. <laughs> I just, I just send it and then uh, figure ah, I can probably fix any screw ups later. Yeah. But luckily, I haven't had any screw ups except for my first clock, which was mine. Uh, speaking of clocks that are mine, uh, folks might Thank like you, to Bob. see this. So this is a pew pew that is owned by me. And I am a licensed FFL, so uh, there's nice. no issues. Now, come on, camera. You're just focused. On <laughs> there not when you're live, it won't focus. <laughs> no, of course not. It sees your but chin. <laughs> I also did the slide and did some cutouts and its gears. Come on. I'm going to force it. There you go. There we go. You can see some gears cut out with the whole steampunk wow. theme then i collared the uh colored nice <laughs> the slide and the grip and the, the back's just black but yeah if you have any questions about any of that stuff fire away all right well uh kimberly is watching from uh australia Hey, Kimberly. Hey, Jack Humphrey from Barbersville. And then I had another comment by Michael Dehart, uh, who's a fellow WVCDO member. So that's cool. And we've got uh, Charles from uh, Cape Town in South Africa. That's awesome. And Bob is working on making one in Spanish for a close friend. Cool, Bob. Uh, I, yeah, you can do these in any language, and I'm going to also be doing uh, some other things with the auto weld text. And that's basically what, if, if you haven't seen my video it launched this morning, uh, it's called auto weld text or something like that. And uh, I go through the process of how I weld, not only welded it, but uh, created these distinct lines in there where you can actually read all of the words so uh you there are lots of these online but none like this because this one has got 491 edits to it i i did note editing i added lines and overlap letters and so on and so on so um and i think my biggest comment so far is people getting an error message that uh there are 491 lines that uh, are, are not closed paths, you know, that error message. Shape set to fill, yeah. Yeah, and they've got it set to fill instead of line, so. <laughs> uh, Put it on line. From North Te Texas, Ed. Um, uh, let me just run through these really quick, and uh, then we can just get on with our yeah. day. Brad Chapman from New Brunswick, Canada. Nice. HTL hosters, of course. Randy Fry is here. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to do the type numbers one, two, three, and four. I think I'll pass on that one. Uh, <laughs> but what's that? I, I don't know what that is. Whatever. Oh, it's a. I, I guess it's a private joke. I'll tell you later. Uh, not a Glock fan. Oh, not. A, I think he means not a Glock fan, but. Uh, yep. I need to get with about engraving on my SIGs. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So the SIG Sawyer was, uh, is one of my, I have a 1911, a SIG Sawyer and, uh, a sky, um, uh, that I need to engrave. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I mean, I get those, I get like right up to the laser with it. I've designed several different patterns and the laser is on, it's focused, you know, the, the it's in the right <laughs> spot. I can't hit that start button. <laughs> yep. Yeah, man. When it's I somebody am, else's gun, I still I still get when it's somebody else's uh anything, really, it it still makes you nervous hitting that start yeah. button because I, I don't want to screw it up. To, 
what I have to do is I have to uh, go and see my friend over at the uh, firing range. They also uh, they also have a regular store there too, where they sell guns, ammo, and targets and things like that, holsters. Um, I think I need to go see him and see if there's anything that I can buy that's garbage, you know, uh, something that somebody brought in that was ruined or that they can't fix or whatever. But I think I need to go see if they have anything like that and buy it and just maybe do some practice on that. That might make me actually feel better. <laughs> Sometimes you can find the uh, chopped sig frames or glock frames and you can source those to practice on because once they're cut in half then they're no longer a firearm so anybody can get those and then you got right. some practice material exactly yeah so i might i might do that i might even talk to my friend that's a colonel at the sheriff's office they might have something there that they i know they destroy them you know and then they just bring them to the dump once they're destroyed so uh maybe i can i i do have a uh, license to carry. Uh, so maybe I can get something from them. I don't know. I call Glocks blocks. <laughs> That's true. They, they look like blocks, don't they? Yeah, it yep, looks like they do. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like they just took rectangle pieces of metal and stuck them together. Anyway, I'm going to get started on my light burn file. Uh, I'll yep. try and keep an eye on the comments. And uh, if I see any comments, I mean, today we're just hanging out in the shop just you know doing what we're doing and i have new this new piece of 17 or 18 inch uh wood that's slightly thicker than the last one so i'm not going to do my cut test which i should be doing uh, i'm just going to go ahead and run it with the settings that i already had and i'll show you that real quick i'll go over into light burn all right i've got some light burn stuff to show as well let me show this one real quick. Yep. So I'll this is uh, my base file. Wait for you. There are 400, as you can see here, 471 edits. Actually, I can show it to you even better if I turn off the uh, red layer. There are 471 edits in this file. Sort of looks like uh, hierogly hieroglyphics. <laughs> and these are all the score lines that I was just telling you about to make the letters stand out. And then there are also cut lines that I've put in here as well. Uh, I don't know if I can find one offhand, but uh, parts where there are little tiny letters to cut them in half so that they drop out easier. And I don't know if this is the most recent file or not. I just quickly opened this one off the network. Well, anyway, in some of these, what I did was like where you have a weird file like this part right here i would take and put continue this line across so that these two pieces would drop out separately and i am actually still working on that final file in the other office um but there are a lot of little parts in here that can drop out the wrong way and i can't seem to find one right now that looks like such tedious work it was it was about seven hours worth of worth of work here and i still have more to do even though i've already launched this file in my store um here you see like right here see what i did here yep so that it pops out without yeah. breaking anything yeah right so this part wouldn't get stuck i just added an uh -huh. additional line right there that way they'll both drop out i'm glad i that's, found one <laughs> but smart. anyhow uh in this file that i actually sell there's a test right here and these are the smallest letters in the file. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. Yeah, go ahead. So these are the, the the smallest letters in the file, and that's what you use to run your cut tests. If those work, you can cut everything else out uh, and not have to worry about it. And these were my settings right here. This using the 30 watt. So um, I'm just going to check my settings real quickly, and then uh, I'm going to run this job. And Patrick has gone and done something real quick. All right, so let's Okey see. Okey Wife just got home. I need to talk to her for a minute. Oh, put her on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
I don't think I've changed any of the settings here. So I think I'm just going to uh, frame this and get it started. All right, All right Patrick, you can take over. All right. So for this Pew Pew, I'm using my one of my favorite fonts, Milk Store. It's a heritage font. So it's not a freebie, but I just like this font family. But this is Milk Store 1 out of the Milk Store family. But anyway, it's just going to say in loving memory of, and then I have Larry Roby, and then his uh, dates. But what I did was took, I just took a picture. I didn't use a Lightburn camera, and then just pasted the picture into Lightburn. But then got this to be the correct size, and then I just made a square a rectangle to use to frame around the slide. And then that gave me the approximate size I needed to, needed to make this text. And then once I had it sized, then I activated framing with light burn and moved it around to where it needed to go, which let's see. If I frame that now, you'll see there's where the name is going. And let me frame the square. So when I frame that, you see exactly that would help get, get the slide lined up. And I just need to make one adjustment to this text, as you can see. This is almost overlapping. I need to drop this down just a hair. Oh, I didn't have you in full screen. Oh, that's okay. Move that up a hair. That looks better. But at this point, I think we're we'll be pretty good to go. Yeah, you move that. It won't hurt anything. Now here's what uh, I'm running for my engraving, which is probably what everybody will want to see. So I am running an engrave pass. And I'm running 10 of those. I'm not using crosshatch, just auto rotate. Then I run a cleaning in between the engraving passes. So when I want to deep engrave, I'll run you know, 10 to 20 passes deep engraving, then I'll run a clean, then another engrave, then another clean, then another engrave. And this one, this engraves a little faster, a little lighter. And then finally another cleaning pass. And then that should get me set up to where I'm ready to anneal it. All right. That font is called Milk Store. Milk Store. And a um, little one on one saying he needs to download some fonts for Lightburn. Uh, the fonts are for your computer, actually. You can go to any web font store. If you uh, Google free fonts, uh, you'll find places like the font and freefonts.com and places like that. Uh, Google has tons and tons of free fonts, um, Google yeah. themsel themselves, and you just download them and double-click them and install them to your computer, and they automatically show up in Lightburn. I'm going to get mine started. I've already framed it. Yep, me too. I'm ready to get this one underway. Because I've made this one as large as I could. <laughs> so uh, it's the entire work bed, 17 inches. Oh, wow. That's nice. So this one's going to take a while. I doubt we'll even finish this on the stream. But right now, it's uh, mine is doing the uh, black line. So it's going to do, I think, 396 black lines. And then it's going to go back and start cutting. I'm going to turn on my air assist. I like to run air um, just because it will make for a cleaner, deeper engrave. But I'm going to turn it on after it starts so you can see the difference in the um, 
I guess, amount of light, you'll see it get much brighter. So my glasses are on, and I'm going to hit Stacey start. Stacy says she, uh, she asked Santa for a fiber laser this year. <laughs> Welcome, Dina. We're just hanging around in the shop today doing nothing, and so we were going to hang around a, together. So That's no air. Here comes some air. You see the difference? Yeah, big difference. No air. Air assist. Yep. Maybe I need to stop using your air assist kit as a uh, hose hold down. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes a huge difference. And people don't believe. I, some people are skeptical and might not believe me, but I've done a ton of research and looked at stuff under a microscope and did testing. And so, just a real quick blow up here. You can see all of those. Uh, 396 lines are done and it is started on the cutting and I know you can't hear it but I can actually hear them blow out because I put some magnets up under the top where it is right now the wood was bigger than the the honeycomb so I put two magnets under there to um, make it level and when I did that now all the wood will blow out the bottom because there's a, a small gap in there I'll show you another view once the thing starts going. Um, You're in full screen. Yeah. Okay. Even when it's on the lighter setting, you can see a difference in, in the, the amount of uh, light reflection. These are the lighter engraving passes now. You see, they're not quite as sparking. I'm using the 120 watt fiber laser on this, so that's why it doesn't, doesn't need very many passes to get deep. Hey, John. Hey, John. I just did an air assist demo. <laughs> I'll have to get a piece of steel out and do another one for him. And I actually have two air, two of your air assists, so I can still use one to hold the hose. <laughs> Real quickly, I'm going to pop back to mine. And there you can see those pieces dropping right out. Especially if you have an air gap under it, you know, it's it's going to that's going to help as well. Oh, and got a picture of Patrick's light there for a minute. Yeah, the light fell off. <laughs> Uh, little one on one says that he's learned his lesson. Air assist is definitely the way to go. Stacy is asking how many passes you're going to do on that, Patrick. Uh, 30 deep and great passes, and then a few clean, then cleaning passes in between. By the way, we are uh, live today on Patrick's channel, my channel, and on Rumble. And that's it. It's uh, done. That's all the engraving passes. Well, mine's not going to be quite that fast. <laughs> no, probably not. So now I'm going to go to my library and run my regular cleanup pass. And you're going to color that afterwards, Patrick? Yeah, I'm just going to make it dark. Okay. Uh, dark and neal, so it will be more rust resistant. So this cleanup pass will make it nice and smooth and kind of get all any extra slag or anything that might be laying around. But with the air assist, there really shouldn't be anything there. So and you're then, you're actually engraving this. You're not annealing it. So what what do you do after to uh, keep it prevent it from rusting since you're taking I'm, the bluing off? I'm going to run a setting and 
we are going to turn this thing black with a with a dark anneal. Hey Gary, Gary's here from the UK. Uh, S. Michael is saying he uh, he or she really likes that font and design, Patrick. Nice. Thank you. All right, now we're going to darken it up. It's going to take a, a few passes. Stacy says that we are now to call you Patrick, uh, Professor Patrick, PP, ah, Professor Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I try to, I've, I've learned a lot about fiber lasers. I'm continuing to, to learn about UV laser um, as I have one of those and done some projects. CO2 Galvo, I know a good bit about CO2 Galvos just because I've used mine a lot. I'm going to switch back just, over to mine real quick. Yep, just, go right ahead. Just, uh, show you where you, this way you can see. Oh, I forgot to turn the air, air extractor on. But this way you can see all the pieces dropping out. But CO2 Galvos, CO2 Gantry, and diodes, I can I can run them all. Uh, you can see that air moving now, sucking it all out. I, I forgot to turn on my inline uh, exhaust. <laughs> you did that for the uh, video we did together on your channel. Yeah, yeah. And I actually got a, uh, a new exhaust um, with a remote control on it. Actually, it's from my storage. I got it maybe a year or year and a half ago, and I never did use it because I had the air scrubber in here. And uh, I, just, I just hooked that one up. Uh, Stacy's saying uh, they saw a UV at the trade show. Pretty damn cool. Uh, I've got one, I think, on the way, uh, a 5-watt UV just like uh, Patrick's from a different supplier, B Laser. B-E. B-E. I don't know who they are, but they you said they wanted to send me one to test. Right there's the little air assist kit that I have that I make and sell. But that's what I that's what I use. Okay, so I still have that one. I need to go dig that out. I'm using the metal one that you sent me. Yeah, yeah. My that's my version too. So it mounts directly to the bed anywhere you want it to mount and uh -huh. uses that different flexible nozzle. And uh this is on the shop compressor, right? How many PSI, you yeah. running on that? I mean, I never open my valve all the way, but I normally keep it at around forty PSI. Really? But but I don't open the valve all the way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably running half that. put my light back up here without knocking it off it's a better view but that is nice and black and shiny it looks eh, kind of looking wet a little bit it does again i'd be uh i'm, I'm afraid to do <laughs> i need to get some some broken firearms and do some testing of my own Glock steel is a little different, so I'm going to finish this up with one final uh, anneal pass that runs much, much slower. Here's By the way, I don't think I don't think I mentioned that um, on the cross, the welded cross that I'm doing here. I've cut my speed back a couple of hundred millimeters per minute. I can normally cut at 755 with this laser, but I think I brought this all the way down to 575 because I just wanted to make sure 
that there aren't going to be any hanging chads. <laughs> I think I'm the first person to use that term in the laser world, hanging chads. <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember that. Hey, Jim. How you doing? We're just hanging around in the shop today. Yeah, John, that's if I could find some that are <laughs> that are like uh, damaged and unusable, that's probably the way to go for testing. Well, I just have uh, I test on my own, basically. All right, that thing's about done. I'll hit it with a magic eraser and some three in one oil, and it'll look real nice. And you don't ever have to worry about that. Do, do, do you do like a final anneal? Is that why you don't worry about it, Russ? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I have. Gosh, let me grab this other glock of mine it's been in the basement just sitting here for almost two years and i still don't have any rust on it <laughs> and i know the basement is has plenty of moisture because i can leave 3d printer filament out overnight the next day it'll, it'll start to get brittle already yeah All right, I moved it, so there's no turning back now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's over. Three in one oil, magic eraser. Magic eraser will leave stuff down in it, and then it doesn't look as nice. And you gotta clean that crap out. By the way, if you use a magic eraser, they're all exactly the same. And the Dollar Tree has a, a big bag of them for a dollar twenty twenty-five as opposed to Walmart where it's like seven ninety-five. Yeah, I buy the generics on Amazon in like a forty pack and for mm -hmm. ten bucks or something like that. Yeah. Something ridiculous like that. So Patrick, since you're an FFL and an engraver. Can I get another AR-15 lower engraved uh, with the WBCL logo? Yes, you can. I actually have uh, some lowers in stock. All right, it's clean. Wait a second. Ah, that looks amazing. L leave it right there. Yeah, that looks nice in line mode. I like that. I see it looks like the middle is filled, but a different color. Yeah, just where the letters are uh, a little wider, you get a little yeah. different. That's nice. Coloring, but I, can't I think imagine. they'll be. I think will be happy with that. So here's my other one that hasn't rusted yet in two years. Yeah, I like that one. And it's done on both sides. Hey, don't go pointing weapons at people, Patrick. I I don't. You pointed it right straight at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll pay more attention next time. <laughs> yeah, so the, my pieces are test pieces for sure. Now we can put oh, this so we have a new together. we have a new term for the debris now. It's now called schmutz. <laughs> schmutz. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy says, uh, "Use your air assist to blow out the schmutz." <laughs> there we go. Very nice. All right. Says very. I think I believe Stacy is a man, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Stacy. I hope. 
John's saying that it would be cool if you filled it with some collar. Collar? Yeah. <laughs> I want to show John this air assist real quick. And what it looks like with and without. And as suit. Michael said, he'll be in touch after Christmas. You know, he'll, All he'll right. Be in... Sounds good. I'll look out for you. All right. I'm going to go back to just the original setting that I used on this tech. Frame it up. So there it is on a piece of steel. I'm going to First, I'm going to do no air. So here we go with zero air. And now I'm going to add air to it. Yeah, you can you can see it. There's with and there's without. Hey Johnny. With. We're just hanging around in the shop. Without. Today. With. Without. Yeah, that's a big difference. All right. Now it's going to clean pass. But you get the picture. Yeah, see, there's that color I was uh, talking about in, in the middle of the letters. Looks really nice. I guess it's just a different shade of the metal. Yeah, yeah. Nice and silvery. Well, we're happy you're here with us, Johnny. <laughs> We were going to hang out just all by ourselves, but we figured, hey, if we're going to hang out, we may as well go live. Yep. Yeah, it is. it assists with cutting and uh, engraving. I don't know if you saw my Glock, John, where I cut the... Uh, made gear shaped cuts out of the slide to go with the steampunk theme john it's very that. similar it's very similar to cutting wood if you don't use air assist you have to go slower or use more power if you do you can go faster and use less power and then the air assist i also use it when uh Engraving leatherette, leather, um, what else? Just stuff like that on the fiber laser. But here's, let me switch cameras. There's the slide that I cut out. So that was using the air assist to help blow through that. So and this that is that's on the 100 watt? I did that with the one, yeah, the 120. 120, yeah. 120 sounds ridiculous. It really is. Uh, However, I have noticed. I have noticed that. Could... Yeah, it, it's an air assist, not a smoke blower. Yes, the smoke blower that Patrick uses uh, uses is a computer fan. Yeah, for especially if I'm wanting to use air assist, but I don't want it to be, you know, running the compressor, cycling it on and off for two hours on a long engrave, I'll set up USB fans. Yeah. And let it blow across the material. Now I need to engrave this tumbler behind me. Well, I've still got a ways to go on mine. It looks like it's almost finished, but the the smaller the letters get, <laughs> the the more time it takes. So it did it did half the cross in just a couple minutes. But um, see how long I've been going already. I've been going for twenty minutes now. So it just it gets slower and slower as you go because the uh, the cuts get smaller. But now they're they're going to get bigger again in a moment. Shouldn't take too much longer. But I've got a few more of these to do. So far, I've done seven. 
I've done one uh, brown acrylic, and I, I want to do one black acrylic, and I want to do one clear acrylic as well. And I might like, uh, I think I might use uh, LEDs to on the clear acrylic, color changing LEDs. Uh, Merry Christmas, pretty. Jack. Thank you for stopping by. Good to see you. That will look really cool. Merry Christmas. Um, so I need to do four glasses using the rotary. And my Mansfield rotary, I took it apart and used it to make like the X, the X, Y, the X table. The y, y table that I was playing around with. So I went to put it back together and I can't find the belt for it. I can't find a tiny little belt. So I'm going to have to use my other rotary to do these glasses. That's my only other option. So let me show you. Do what you got to do. I'm going to go to this camera and show you what I did. If you see on the chuck, I cut some Velcro, the loop part. Let's see if I can adjust that so you can see a little better. But anyway, on the loop, I took the loop part, cut it, and then added it to the uh, the chucks so that they would be kind of soft jaws. I don't know how well this will work. John says he's waiting for his brother to go, come clean up his shop so he can get to his fiber layers. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, Sharon. Welcome. We're just hanging around in the shop today, so you're not late hey, for John. anything. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was not paying attention. I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's all right. And Dan, uh, the 30-watt the cuts acrylic amazingly well. The clear I'm going to have to do on the CO2, but uh, the the uh, acrylic on the, the uh, dark acrylic, it cuts like butter. I was going to ask John how that new Aon CO2 is working out for him. I'm sure it's working out great. <laughs> it's a great machine. Yes, it is. All right, so I can made. see that everything is still dropping fine, as you can see there. With that, it's, using those magnet standoffs, you can actually see the pieces fall out. It's look. It looks amazing. It's just awesome watching it. It, it took seven that. hours to design this file. Seven hours. You definitely need a precision laser to do that file. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you need precision focus is really the key. Uh, you know, a level work bed and a, and a precision focus and you got it made. I'm debating whether I want to I might just do this cup on the CO2 Galvo first. Let me zoom out. And okay, move the camera over there. My grandkids are home from school. I hear them outside playing with the uh, blow up punching bag. <laughs> I know you guys can't hear it, but. That, those things are always fun. By the way, if you guys decide that uh, you want to do this file, uh, we're in the live stream now. If you go to my store, engraveandcutfiles.com, right now, in the next two days, uh, use the coupon code OF, as in our father, coupon code OF, and you will get this file for free. Holy crap, that's awesome. Just, just because you're keeping us company here in the shop today. <laughs> that's very generous. You guys better jump on that. I have a hidden message in the video, um, but a lot of people are not finding it, so... <laughs> If you decide Ooh. to join us today, you're going to get it for free. I don't think I'm going to mention it again. So the 59 people we've got 
watching right now, they'll know about it. Uh, engrave and cut files.com. Use coupon code OF as in our father. And you can get this file for free right now and run it yourself. Well, I can't do that other file because the graphics on this computer. I need to get it on the drive. Uh, Stephen, Stephen is saying, uh, can you explain how to order riser kits for MK2 without having to create an account on your website? Oh, uh, let me. I think if you now, just send him a PayPal, right, Patrick, with a note saying that you can't yeah, order online. They might be thinking about the, the account for the member space, and you do not need a member space account. Oh, right, right, right. Because it flags for member space. Let me double check and make sure I have it set that you can order without creating an account. Okay. I'll do that right now. I, I think you can. Uh, John is working on a on the venting system and need to confirm with Aon that uh, RV antifreeze will work on. Yeah, it will. Mm -hmm. Not. It's got to be the uh, the pink stuff. So it's got to be the water antifreeze, you know, for the fresh water tank, not the engine antifreeze. So uh, it's food. The food safe RV antifreeze works with it. Jack Williams Jr. says, hello. Hello, Jack. <laughs> see, I'm getting over to my page. Johnny, said, Johnny DeVille says, me and my girlfriend have followed your channel for a couple of months, and we have learned a lot about Light Burn. Thank you, Louisiana. Hobby guy. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> it's what I do. It's my hobby. So uh, I'm glad that you're following along. Now follow my channel for a couple months. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Pretty please. Yes. John says it's the pink stuff. That's the right stuff, John. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> hey, Pop Pop is here. Pop Pop. Hey, see, hey, I did Pop -Pop. that video you asked for this morning. Did you see it, Pop Pop? Uh, Jamie saying she got the file this morning when she watched my uh, video. Thank you, Jamie. Have fun with it. Pop up if you haven't watched that video. Shame on you. That video is for you. <laughs> uh, Sharon says, I used the technique on names for photo albums, but forgot to take a picture. But it turned out awesome. Cool. Uh, ah, it there it is. Okay, whoever asked me that question, I am ticking the box that says allow customers to place orders without an account. So ah. give that a minute to update and you should be good to go. Cool. Oh, no. Pop Pop missed that video. <laughs> well, I, I made that video just for you, Pop Pop. <laughs> In fact, your picture, your name, everything is even in the video. So you got to make sure you go watch it. And uh, at least take a look at it. <laughs> okay. Jamie says he, not she. That's, I thought you were a he. <laughs> sure thing. Do you have a link? Um, I'm not sure Dude. what. Yeah, I think he's talking to you. He must be on your channel. I wonder if I post the link in this one, it'll probably go to all of them. Yeah, I'll do that. And Dina is saying that uh, she subscribed to both of us this morning. Well, thank you, Dina. And thank you I, very much. I am finished with mine. Let me see what Lightburn says real quick. It says... Well, that's interesting. It no longer tells you. Oh, no, here it is. 29 minutes, 51 seconds it took. Okay. 
see what I get. Oh, it's going to be good. to show you guys uh, what I'll be working on this evening. I will be doing a full Glock stipple, but it's going to be an actual episode that I'll be uploading. I got it. Get it go ahead. If go I can on. get it edited tonight, it'll go up tomorrow. I got to put a cut right here because this one gets stuck. Let me see if I can show you. This little piece right here is stuck in there, and I had that happen before. So uh, I completely forgot which piece that was. Let's see if I can do it this way, push it out. And there's another one on the other side. So now you can see it. See those two pieces hanging down? One looks like a lightning bolt. And then the other side, those two have to go. So does this one. I got to put a, make a couple little more edits. Oh, you want to see what the what the work bed looks like? Look at that mess. <laughs> <laughs> That's when your little shop back comes in handy. I I do want to point out that there are only one, two. Three pieces, four, and maybe a couple of others that didn't just drop right out. In fact, let me put this in a bigger screen. If I can do that. So almost, right almost every piece has dropped out. And this is what happens when you get your settings right. And that's the reason why I included the... Uh, the test piece to get your settings right. So I'm going to use this piece right here right now and edit this file again to uh, make sure that that won't happen on the next one. And it wasn't that it wasn't cut through. It's that these pieces need to be separated. That's all. I'm going to do that right now. All right. And I'm right. going to turn on the jet the jet engine. So if you hear yeah. fans, it's the CO2 Galvo. I guess I can uh, do this in light burn. But on my screen is the Glock stipple that I'll be doing this evening. So it mimics uh, a hand stipple. It's basically just a bunch of random dots separate and joined together. But the person that wanted the stipple job actually purchased this file off of Etsy. So I've Although got my... I was, I was working on making something similar using the AI vector generator in Illustrator. And what I made was pretty darn close to this. So I... Probably could have saved him about 30 bucks. So I am doing my uh, my edits here. And I'm zooming way in so you can see this. This is the piece that I was talking about here that was hanging down. And uh, I'm just going to put a cut right straight across here. Like that. And I think I will even put one across here. Having these, these little tiny cuts don't really matter time-wise, but it's going to make a big difference to have these things drop straight out. This was the other one. I don't know why this one is such a problem, but this, this one was stuck. So let's unstick it. 
And let's see. Oh, below that other one was another one. So this is all like part of the uh, burn to learn process here. You burn something, you see something that doesn't come out exactly right, and you go back and fix it. Burn to learn. Trademark. <laughs> Trademark, yeah. Rich Rich has permission to use it there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I think I can cut this piece right here, too, as well. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to send this and hope for the best. So here I'm going to do this tumbler with the CO2 galvo. I run my air assists on tumblers as well. It keeps the, the flare up down and gets the nasty smell right into the fume extraction. Win win. Okay, here we go. Well, it would be better if I uh, had. Wow, you see this little piece right here, Patrick? Right here? Yes. This piece is together all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> Hey, God, I'm going to show you. I mean, it is like less than a millimeter. Can you see that? Just kind yep. of like dangling. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like less than a <laughs> millimeter. And it's still stuck on. I'm just going to put a line in there and get rid of it. Wow, that's yeah, interesting. I've, I've never done a cup with this coating on it. So, yeah, this was just to send it and see what happens. I think I still have it in two camera mode. You should check, make sure that we're not, everybody can see what you're doing. Let's see, where am I at? All the way over here. I'm just uh, adding some more lines to mine. Let these things drop out a little easier. It looks fine. I'm just gonna run it one more time just to be sure. Again, this is not the fiber laser. This is uh, the CO2 galvo. All right, you're done. It says Timmy. Oh, there we go. Jimmy. Jimmy Chamar. I'm going to clean this with some soap and the magic eraser. And hopefully, well, that's not interesting to look at. Get back to number one. That might not be interesting to look at either. All right, that looks like about it for the editing. Just save this. And uh, again, folks, all I did was, let me come over here. All I did was look for these parts. 
that are hanging down and I added some lines to cut them so that they would just drop out instead. All of these parts will now drop out on the next one. And then I won't have to worry about picking it up out of, I mean, I had no problem getting it out of this, but uh, what happened was it got stuck on this piece right here. And no matter which way I turned it, I had to pop it all out in the same direction at one time or else it had a hard time coming out. All right. After a little bit of scrub with the magic eraser, it turned out good. Let me see. I'll make a full screen here. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to pop out all the little ones that I got left. Now, all those rough edges, those are actually in the file. There's some uh, like little holes in rough edges around the letters. So that was actually in the file that I was sent. But that's about a one minute tumbler job on this CO2 Galva. There's project number two done. I need project number three, which makes me nervous. <laughs> but anything rotary always makes someone a little nervous. I did find one piece that's not completely cut through, and that is really odd. I'm going to have to go back and check that file to see if there's a cut there. Because there should be no reason for that. Let me go back and look. Uh, it's uh, one, two, three, four rows up. One, two, three, four rows up. That's the bottom of the R. Okay, that's weird because it is completely attached. I guess there must have been a glue pocket right there. That's strange. Only one anomaly, it looks like, on the entire cut. Maybe two. Nope, that one came out. And I am using, oh, and I can see it too on the back. I can see where the anomalies are. I can see the little brown dots where there shouldn't be any. See the little flashback? Mm -hmm. there's, there's four of them. And that's got to be a, a glue problem. This is a new, a new type of wood. First, the first time I'm cutting it, and uh, that's got to be an anomaly in the wood because even the tiniest little pieces in here are all cut through except for those four places. And this was not on the bed, so getting a flashback is almost impossible. I am going to run a test on the rotary just to make sure. I have all my steps set correctly and everything's going in the right direction. Let's see that the E is attached. Should I've, I've attached. lost my caliper, sorry. Getting in the way of the camera. No, that's not it. Oh, it's probably still in my rotary setup. Laser tools, rotary cell. Yep, there it is. So this little piece of wood is 29.7 diameter, so 93.305 circumference. I'm going to make me a little rectangle here on the screen. It's 93.305. Okay. 
3.3. All right. Center that. So I did just find a problem with this file. Cutting this one out. I can't I cut out seven before. Let me show you this real quick. I've now edited it and it's fixed, but the E in Amen at the bottom is not attached. Can you see that? Yep. I've gone ahead and fixed that. That's a little bit. So uh, if you get this file from my store, Go back there tonight and download the version three, I think it'll be. And you can delete the one that you've got. Whenever edits I make to my files, I put them, I replace the file that's in my store and you can just download it again. But I think I'm pretty close to finished with this one. All right, so I just ran that rectangle around that piece of wood. Just want to make sure it went all the way around and overlapped properly, and it did. All right, so the rotary is good that way. Now I want to make sure the direction's not messed up, so I'm just going to do the word text on it. Or test either way. I'm not watching. I'm just trying to clean up all these little bits and pieces in here. I haven't been watching the comments. Uh, Sharon saying, can you do a zero offset around the outside and have all of those parts pop out? Well, it's not going to be a problem anymore. And no, you really, I guess you could, but that would be one big long cut that would be totally unnecessary. And no, because the you'd have to do a pretty big offset um, because they, there are cuts in between all the letters. So I would say no to that. And then Handler Corral says, when he tried the zero offset, it didn't work. Yeah, it tries to fight. That's what I was just saying. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Patrick, why the CO2 Galvo and not the fiber for the tumbler? The CO2 Galvo is much faster. With the CO2 Galvo, it's not going to mark the metal. So you can run hot and fast. If you run too hot, it can discolor the metal, but in general, you don't have to worry about etching the metal or discoloring it. So you can run hot and fast and do cylinder correction and do a tumbler in less than a minute with minimal cleanup. Whereas a fiber, you got to have your settings dialed in and depending on what color is going to determine what settings you need because, you know, black's easy to do. Red is probably the most difficult. Um, but you're not going to burn up the cup with the CO2, whereas the fiber you could if you're hitting it too hard, then you're discoloring the metal or even etching the metal and setting it up for rust. In general, the fiber just takes longer too. CO2 has a bigger spot size, so you can run through that. That's why that tumbler, I'm running a 0.1 line distance and, and get one done in about a minute or less. So the most time consuming part of this project is finding and making sure that you just push out all the little parts that are cut. Let me show you the uh, final results. Now, this is a uh, new piece of wood that I've never tried before. So, but I also did it in a slightly larger size, just slightly larger. So I used the max size of the, the work bed and, uh, this is the final project that I did here live. I've got a few more of these to make. I just have to clean up 
these four little burn spots, which is uh, in the glue. And I already fixed the E in AM, amen. So that's not, it's not an issue right now, but um, it shouldn't have been, uh, it should have been attached. So that's fixed now in the file. I'm going to run a couple more of these and then I'm going to uh, yep. do the bases after that. My rotary is set up and ready to go. It's dialed in that I'm just not comfortable using this truck rotary on these glasses. I'm afraid they're going to break. If I hey, can find the belt, if I could find the belt for my Mansfield rotary, I would use it. Okay, I'm going to get another one ready because I still have. One, and if anybody two, doesn't know, this is the Mansfield rotary. I have three more to go. <laughs> And I'm missing the belt that runs between this pulley and these pulleys, and I can't find the little thing. No idea where it's at. But this would be great to use on the glasses. I could flip this uh, little hold down around, and they would do great. But So I, I am seeing, I think, what's going on with this wood. This wood is not as clear as my other wood. See that? That black, That dark brown spot right there? Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of them all over the wood, little dots and spots, and I'm not quite sure what what those are. Where did that wood come from? Um, I don't know. See that? That's not a that's not a scratch. Those are spots. Maybe it's glue or something. I don't know, but that's the two pieces that I had to actually uh, prop, prompt out in that spot. And this is uh, one, two, three plies. There, I can see it in the ply. I need to make that. See it? In the ply? Yep. Yep. That black spot? Yep, sure do. And there's, Interesting. It's, it's darker brown. It's dark brown here dark brown here it's actually in the ply this side looks okay for the most part hmm interesting so who in the comments has stippled a G lock before and if you have what is uh, your normal prep process do you file the factory stippling off or sand it or what do you, what have you done so what i'm going to do is get my little battery operate uh battery handheld random orbital sander and sand off the factory stippling i do pretty well using that the handheld on that um, it's fairly easy to control so that's what i use I'm going to have to contact Mansfield and get a new belt. Man, it stinks. Hmm. Oh, package was delivered. Now I'm kind of stuck. I just don't know why I can't find that belt. You guys hate it when you misplace something and you know you saw it recently, but you still can't find it? Yeah. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, hey, I've got a, a ghost in the shop that is constantly... See you later, Sharon. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, yes, Stacey. Um, I, whenever I make edits, I re-upload them to uh, the store and uh, th these edits aren't really going to make a difference, but I'll put a new version number there. And all you do is uh, log in and read down the new, download the new version, delete the old one. 
Uh, I don't think it's sap because it's in the filler too. So uh, this is not really a, I don't know what kind of plywood this is, but I don't think it's sap. I mean, it could be. The tripod said he gave up looking for his missing leg. I've, I've seen you post it. You, there's a reward for anyone that finds it. <laughs> and it's, it's funny. You got a great sense of humor about the whole uh, missing the leg thing. That's for sure. And it's funny when Sam Prentice makes a, a joke in it your way. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything anyone anybody wants to see demonstrated since I'm not going to be running the glass on the rotary at the moment? Drop a link to your, your channel. Let me look at the banners real quick. Um, uh, you get a different layout here. So I changed the layout. So let me just go back to this one. There, I put it up on the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Sam is fun. He's he's got a great sense of humor. That's for sure. Definitely. I'm trying to think if there's anything interesting. Uh, I don't know. I've restarted my next job now. And I, again, forgot to turn on my air. I was just thinking I can show folks. I'll show you guys something. I know exactly what I'll show you. So I got an order for the Glock jigs that I sell on my website, but I just thought I'd show you guys uh, how they work for holding your piece in place whenever you're doing a stipple job. I think uh, the one guy said you were wanting to learn about engraving firearms. I'll show you this. And you don't have to use my jigs. You can use any jigs that you that you come across, but this is a handy way to make sure that you don't bump them and uh, end up with your work messed up. As soon as I find my camera remote. Let's see. Uh, 23rd, 9 p.m. Eastern time, Phil. I need to increase the speed on this thing. Okay. So what I have are jigs that come in a right and a left. And they'll hold about any Glock. And what they're meant to do is the index against the trigger guard and then the index at the top. So you can get a straight engraving just by indexing the frame in the jig and then making sure you're bolted down to your bed through the three, let's see, there are three holes for placement on the bed. One, two, three. But anyway, you place your frame in here. You can see that I push it all the way back, it indexes to the trigger guard, and then at the top, figure out which way to bring this. Yeah, and then right here at the top, it indexes against this little block, so you know that it's straight. 
then you index it to the trigger block, the trigger guard. And then I give everybody a little thumb screw. And this little piece here that rests on top of the trigger guard. And then with the thumb screw, you, that puts pressure. So once you have it lined up exactly where you want it to go, you tighten it down. And then even if you're working with a smaller frame, the trigger block is what's holding the frame level to the bed. It's not the, the grip. So it doesn't matter if it's thinner. You can see that. There we go. But then that just locks it in place and it doesn't move around. So then once you index it in there, screw it down to the bed. It's not going anywhere until your job's done. I'm just fixing this uh, file so that I can... But I'll be using these tonight. So I've got to get this. I've got to get this done. And the video made of it. Rich, I did pick up an HDMI switcher. Oh. So now I've added two additional cameras to the setup. Cool. Now I've got plenty of cameras. Just remember what number each camera is is a challenge. <laughs> I have mine labeled. <laughs> 8.4 by 11 by 11.8. So what I want to know is now that you guys have run the 10, 20, and 30 watt, which other three do you really prefer? Really want to upgrade from non lasermatic and value your opinion. I prefer the 1030. Uh, I do too. I can always go drop down to 10 to do the fine engraving yep. and yep. then 30 watt. I, don't, I can, which you saw Rich cutting just a little bit ago, cutting right that th three million. Yeah, right now. <laughs> Let me take myself out of full screen. Um, but cutting that three millimeter plywood at 575 millimeters per minute is very speedy. It rivals, it's as fast as my 90 watt CO2 gantry. Um, John is saying that uh, the 20 watt is the sweet spot, but uh, I found that the 20 watt and the 30 watt have the same exact spot size. No, I'm just elevating, uh, and I'm just elevating it with the bare magnets themselves because I don't want it to be too high. So I'm not using the uh, 3D printed standoffs, no. I could have done that, but it's I'm so close to the edge. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, John, I have both the 20 and the 30, and there is no noticeable difference in the in the spot size. Thank you, Johnny. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I am going to uh, keep quiet now for a minute because I have to go work on the network. I'm going to actually upload this new file now. Nice. I was thinking about uh, engraving this knife. Anybody want to see a knife engraving? I do. I mean, we're just what, hanging around doing know. nothing. Why not? Yeah, like I don't know exactly what I want to do. Any suggestions? I have to pattern keep quiet. wise or uh, theme wise. Anybody in the comments? Yeah, 
Yeah, I will find a belt as soon as I get a new one. Cats and flags are always good. Man, it's getting hot in here now. Had the heat on for the last two days. What's the temperature down there? Right now, my computer Outside. says 74. 74? It's like a day at the beach. <laughs> When I went out earlier today, it was 44. It wasn't too bad. Fly fishing. Fly fishing? Nah. I don't think I want to do fly fishing. It's, it's a good topic, but I don't fly fish. Version 3. Yeah, I don't fly fish either. I never, never I even tried it. Let's see. This knife is how long? About two twenty. It's pretty close. I've done a forest on a knife blade. I wonder where that knife is. Use some oil. All right, so now the question is I uh, got to go. Let me make this bigger. There you go. I put a buck on a buck. Please click on the cow's nose. <laughs> This 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 new uh, H capture is something else. Let me tell you. Sometimes it tells you to do things that you can't even do. I mean, do you guys use your pen tool and light burn to make any outlines? I'm not an expert with it, but I use it sometimes. show you let's uh, go to number four I'm gonna make an outline of the blade first so I'm gonna select t2 and then go to the pen tool and then start drawing my outline I think you can see that Now, with light am. burn, if you click and hold, you can make these curved. I am fixing that file, uploading the new file to the store. So I'm not really paying attention. <laughs> Let 
That's okay. Just doing an example. Well, people were asking for it. I may as well get it done right now, being that I did seven or eight, nine edits to it. And there we go. Anybody that's downloaded it prior to just now can go delete that download and re-download it again. Everything will be the same, but it will be the new file. Here's where the pen tool has an issue because as soon as I select to move, then I lose where I, my place where I was at. Sucks. But I get the crosshairs over the end of this piece. Then it should join back up. All right, now I can come back to uh, the live stream. <laughs> My file is still cutting up there. All right, that's finished. Oops. So what were you doing with the pen tool? Made an outline of the, of the knife yeah. blade. I got you. You know, if you go slow enough, it does a perfect outline. It attaches to the photo. Yeah. I got that one mark out of place there. Oh, are you just doing the tool path? That doesn't matter, does it? Unless you're going to... Yeah, unless I was going to cut something out with it. Well, zoom back in on it and select it and go to note edit. Yep. And hold control. There you go. Another thing you can do is just put two points, one at the tip of the blade and one at the uh, corner of the blade, and then just smooth that and pull the uh, uh, pull the little smooth things out until you get the perfect shape of the blade. The handles. And I made it. Handles. Yeah, and I made a mistake whenever I was doing this anyway because I went on the outside of the blade when I wanted to go on the inside of what was uh, sharpened. That's what I wanted to say. Jeez. John says the splines are cool to work with. Yep. Yeah, I love those uh, those handles because you can make any any curved shape with them with only two nodes. Uh, thank you, Rich, for your hard work. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. There we go. I think that looks better. And uh, Mike Dev uh, just got a new longer Ray 5 20 watt laser. I've watched a lot of different videos. I can honestly say yours have been. Oh, thank you, Mike. <laughs> appreciate it. Hey, what, what if he's talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody subscribe to Patrick's channel, please. Uh, he, he's he got such a large amount of good content, and he's like shadow banned by YouTube. So um, they, they don't put out his content for some reason because they think that he's a spammer, an unjustified tag that they put on him. So, uh, and he's not at all in any way, shape, or form. If I was, I'm a terrible spammer. That's for yes, sure. that's for sure. Because <laughs> that is for sure.
Okay, we just lost a viewer. Who left? <laughs> uh, Johnny DeVille is from uh, Sweden, looks like. Oh, nice. I was just uh, watching a video well maybe a month or two ago about sweden and their defense system that they have there and uh i've been to sweden and it looks like the most beautiful mountainous country you've ever seen and you would never guess that they are unbelievably well defended i mean <laughs> you could be passing by a farm and one of their farm buildings contains a big huge 50 millimeter cannon inside. <laughs> I was watching a, a video. That'd be amazing. On, yeah, I was watching a video on how they do, how they stayed neutral by defending any access from any direction uh, during World War II, and they they set up all of these points with with all of these defenses that you can't even see, and uh, you know they're all choke points. And when Hitler tried to invade sweden they they tried coming through these choke points and they were just obliterate obl obliterate by the defenses so uh, it's amazing it was an amazing video i can't remember the name of it though but uh they just have incredible defenses there because of any way in is through a choke point Looking to see. Oh, that you know what? That is probably a good point. Uh, Stacy's making your pro 2A. Yep, that's probably a good, a good point. Uh, Patrick's channel is scrolling across the bottom of the screen, so it is youtube.com slash at ls engraving right there on the bottom of the screen. You know what? He's right. That's Sweden. <laughs> my, my, my mistake. Yep. Sweden. That's Switzerland. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so cool story. You, <laughs> yeah. I thought you said Sweden, but I was only half paying attention. Okay. I think I'm going to cut out this uh, flag and put the little flag on there. Hey, Michael. So in order to do that, I'm going to put the blue layer on top of the black layer. <laughs> Let's see. And then it's always A minus B. So flag, then template, you know, tools, cut shapes, and then get this out of the way. And then I have my flag. So there we go. Yeah, there, there are lots of YouTube channels that won't even mention the word. They won't even say, you know, 2A <laughs> because the algorithm winds up banning them. Hopefully, it's not going to happen to me. <laughs> All right. And what I did is I forgot to do a control D on my outline. So I want two copies of it. So let's try it again. A minus B. Tools, cut shapes, move this out of the way. Now I've got a nice outline for framing. Select them both and bullseye them, see if it if they line up. Yeah, they should. Pretty close. Just move this guy over and down and It looks there like you're going to have to select the flag and shrink it, use the control. Yeah. What do you think? You're a little bit outside. Oh, you want to go off, off the edge? Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. That'll be close enough. Uh. 
DMP Tactical lost over 300,000 subscribers. Had to make a completely new channel. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm I'm so pro two way. I've been serving on the board for the West Virginia Citizens Defense League for the last six years. We're um, probably one of the most effective civil rights advocacy advocacy groups in the country. But we wrote like our West Virginia's constitutional carry law. We've wrote a bunch of other pro two A bills and keep getting stuff passed. I'm also a registered lobbyist in West Virginia, and I lobby for WVCDL. So that's a little bit of my background. A lot of people don't know that. I'm getting down to my final few cuts now. It's going to go back and do those uh, those lines that are not closed. So um, I see there. And there's a dozen or so new people that have joined us. Uh, we're we're just uh, hanging out, hanging out in the shop, Patrick and I. So we thought we would go live and uh, have some fun. Yep. Now let's frame this bad boy up. T leverage uh, all the way from Scotland. Wow. I appreciate the help. Can't wait for my 1030. You're going to love it. John is also pro 2A. And DMP Tactical subbed, Patrick. Oh, thank you, sir. Or ma'am, whoever. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. That's going to be good enough right there. Let me adjust my camera. Right there. Now let's decide. And we are up to uh, a few more people that have just joined us. Oh, cool. So uh, welcome aboard. We're just hanging around in the shop today, getting some projects done. And figured that we just hit the live button. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take this coating off. Fiber lasers are so much more interesting to watch. I'm going to hit that with a little more power to totally annihilate that coating. And it looks like those little pieces that were hanging off are in the perfect spot. So. Yep. Why is this damn thing flickering? It's killing me. Patrick, your flicker is joining us once again. Yep, it's back. I don't know what to do. We'll see. Uh, DMP, you don't, you don't like watching the, the diode? <laughs> um, for those of you that were talking about the file that I edited live earlier, that is 
live on the website now. So you can just delete the file that you already got and go log in there and re-download it. It'll look like the same file, but it is the edited version. That It's looking nice and shiny silver. You can't really tell on the camera. I can see it. It's looking good now. Hey, look at that. I'm done with my second one. You can tell that the fire fiber puts off uh, a lot of reflected infrared because when it runs, my remote control for my camera doesn't work. And I want you to see that this one popped right out. You see that? How's your E? That was, uh, let me switch back over here. This came right off this time. It didn't get stuck anywhere. And my E is solid. <laughs> nice. So this is the new file. Now I've got to do some bases. Popper is tough, Jeremy, because of it's so reflective. Might try where you're going to cut coating it with a sharpie just to get some black there to uh, get it to absorb that laser light. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to run it to see. doing my strategy of just sending it to see what happens. I was hoping I could get a blue. I'm using this 120 watt MOPA and I do not have collar settings for it yet. So I'm trying to adjust settings from uh, another laser. So let's do this. See what happens. That is not right. Pretty cool gold going now. It's almost black. I might just uh, run it like leave it like that. Yeah. I'm just putting uh, using some of my wood the rest of my wood here i'm 
All right, this is going to look cool. It's a really, like, shiny gold. I'm just going to leave it at this gold. Yeah, that second pass is bringing it out. Now you can see the gold on your screen. Yeah, I don't know what's causing it. Tends to be worse when light burns running. So what I did there was it ran a line after that fill. Gave some uh, more color to those stars around the edge. More definition anyway. Just gonna call this done. I'm just realizing I think I need to change my scan angle. And over scanning is going to wind up being a problem. So oh, I think I'm just going to do this on a different piece of wood for now. There's the gold. It's not too bad. So from that to that. Which is better? One or two? Patrick, I'm not in the... Uh, Three in or the four. Car, so. Keep an eye on the comments. Okay. I'm I'm working in light brown. Can you guys tell me if the Atom Stack A5 Pro is a good laser or not? Mm, I personally wouldn't buy one. I, I wouldn't buy any open gantry system anymore since uh you know, there are other manufacturers that are doing all-in-one units. So, that's my opinion. Oh, okay. Um, Just to take that a step further on the open gantry system, by the time you buy all of the uh, things that you need, uh, you know, the enclosure and the air assist, all the extra things that you need, it's going to cost you the same as an all-in-one. No, nah, that'll be enough for that. Yeah, please. Okay. 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 
sounds good. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Let's see. Next comment. Uh, somebody said they tried to re-download, but pages showing coupon usage limit has been reached. And then Deanna oh. followed up with, Bill, go to your account and you should be able to re-download it. Yeah, you got to go into your account. So take a look at what happened to it, to my magnet. Let me see if I can get it. One of the pieces actually <laughs> engraved the magnet where it went over over the top of it. Sure That's did, cool. didn't it? <laughs> oh, that was a mistake. Yeah, if I took the time to find it, I could have done uh, blue. Absolutely. You don't ever want to let two of these magnets attract to each other. Typically, I haven't done any lately, but I'll run test grids on steel to try to get exactly where I'm getting the collar and what collars. You see the nice little <laughs> rainbow there? Over scanning is going to be a problem. Let's see if I can't fix this. Saying that Adam Stack was the cheapest they had found. They don't have much to spend. Do you have any other recommendations? Uh, I would go with, if, if it were me, I would go with the Alga Laser. Because it's got a, a better beam. I'll get a link to that. Okay, I have, um, I have, oh, wrong one. I have redone my template here. I'm just going to run off a few pieces at once. Keith, he was asking about a laser on a budget. So if he doesn't have the, you know, oh, um, Twelve hundred dollars for the the Roly. The Alga laser makes the ten watt DIY kit for two ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, also on my forum, lahobbyguy.com, there is a uh, twenty watt Elagu, I think it is, something like that, linked on the forum to eBay for two ninety nine. I believe it is. Let's see. All right. I think I might be in the right spot here. <laughs> let's see. And let's see. That orange text needs... Okay, I have over scanning turned off on that. Where's that eBay link? Is it actually in the forum? Yeah, I you have to be logged in. Is it under the hobby diode? I don't know where it's where it's at. Just hang on one second, I'll look for it. All right. Uh, let's see. 
I just posted a link to your worm in the chat. It is um, Enjoy Wood is the name of it. Hang on one second. I'll get the link. And it looks like the price has changed to $325 plus a big shipping fee of $1.99. Hang on one second. I have to find the link to, to begin with. Oh, let's see. Okay. What you looking for? You know, I'm looking for the actual link on eBay. Huh? Sending them to my forum, they're not going to find it. Next to the bottom drawer. Oh, you're talking to somebody else? Uh, yeah. All right. Search 51 matches. I thought this was using my and other by, microphone. By the way, the, the Enjoy Wood, I think, is the same company as Adam said. Okay, I think this is the right topic. I'm just going to click on the eBay link and see it is now 357.88. So I'm guessing as it started at 299. I'm not going to put that link. I'm going to put the link to this topic. And it is the very first post because it's a much shorter link than the YouTube link. But there, in the very first post, you will see the uh, link to eBay. There you go. Why am I posting as you and you're posting as me? Oh. Uh where it says all down at the bottom, it posts to both. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, that way it goes to both channels' chats. Yeah. Well, there is... Uh, oh, okay. So it posted both of them, I see. That is the link to the uh, $350 20 watt, which actually is a, a great deal. Lots of people on my forum have ordered them. And they come in. They're not seconds or defects or anything like that. They're perfectly fine. Oh, thank you, Home Zero CNC, for subscribing today. Uh, the laser matic could probably take the coating off of that knife, but you're not going to get this. Uh, you might be able to get a similar result by adjusting the frequency on the laser matic to get different color on steel, although it'll it'll take a good bit longer. But you could definitely adjust the frequency of the laser manic and then try to get that color on steel. The frequency I notice as you go down in frequency, it changes color. So, um, but like I tried it, at, I went from 8,000 to 7,000 with no difference. And then from 7,000 to 6,000 with a big difference. And then from 6,000 to 5 to 4 to 3 with no difference. So uh, you have to do a whole bunch of testing to see what frequencies are usable. So it's sort of like there are big ranges of frequency that don't do anything. Yep. It would be a big time investment. So, oh, uh, Johnny uh, lives in Sweden. That's right. So I have uh, turned off over scanning on that text that you see right there in order to be able to go that fast and get that close to the edge. And hopefully the entire text will come out readable. It's my first time trying it without overscanning. 
Usually with a diode, if you don't overscan, the text isn't going to come out right. When it comes to collar on the fiber laser, HTL Holsters, who's been in chat, has done a ton of collar testing. He's made some very cool projects on steel out of the collars that he finds. And uh, now he's also done very cool images on steel with fiber laser. Oh, okay. All right. I have the gentleman that's picking up the block that we just engraved a little bit ago here. So I'm going to step away for a moment and I'll be back in just okay. a minute. So uh, on uh, James, on this where uh, you went back, read down that coupon code is only good for one purchase. So once you purchase it, it's in your account. All you have to do is log in and it's already in there and you can re-download it. Uh, Johnny is saying he's made a couple of his own Christmas designs, but it takes forever to cut them out. Well, you saw in the, uh, it took, I think, uh, what was it? 29 minutes for the Our Father Prayer Cross. Was, wasn't long at all with the 30 watt. And I did it on the 20 watt yet uh, day before yesterday, and I think it was 42 minutes. Uh, I tweaked the R father yesterday, five millimeter offset. Yeah, the only thing about doing the offset, you can you can do the offset, and uh, but I've just fixed all of the parts that get stuck, so there's no need for it. It's just going to add time to the uh, to the file. But this way I can cut a walnut layer to fit behind. Oh, I see. I see what you did. Yeah, you did a second layer with the offset. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, you could do a, a walnut layer. You could do uh, paper, you know, like a, paper, a colored paper backing. Anything that you want. Gary is going off chat to do fatherly things <laughs> cool hey scott uh, patrick stepped off he just had a customer come in but we are just hanging out in the shop today doing nothing and we figured that uh if we're hanging out in the shop we may as well just hit the go live button because we were on camera so doing a private meeting And uh, just to let you know, I did just take a look at that text. So turning off the uh, overscanning on that small, tiny text like that is okay. It looks like it's coming out fine. And again, my settings on this is uh, are very slow. You'll see when this is finished, the reason why I'm only scanning at 7,500 instead of um, like, let's say 25,000 is because I want a super black um, burn on these letters. And I'll show you close up on the other camera when this is done. But you'll, you'll see that um, the Lasermatic has a slightly different frequency than most lasers. And it can do dark black um, engravings. Uh, yes, Keith. The file is updated. If you log into your account, um, you can download. It looks like the same file, but it's the newer version. Just delete the one that you have. Scott says, love my Lasermatic 10. Thank you for the initial review. Oh, my pleasure, Scott. I love mine too. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have it anymore because I uh, donated that to charity. I'm back. Hey, Patrick. Our... Uh... The customer was very happy. So that's good. And uh, I did bring back an example with me. You, um, I can't remember who asked about blue. But um, there's... There, there is no I in heaven. I don't know what you mean, Keith. I'm going to make this uh, bigger momentarily. I... I... I want to see an explanation for that. <laughs> Keith says that the eye is in heaven. 
doesn't have a line. Oh, is in heaven. Okay, let me see. Uh, I'll be as it is in heaven. Uh, where I don't know where you'd put a line. So this was all done on the fiber laser, but you can see there's a bunch of different colors in that. If I can get it to focus, I'm going to zoom in. There we go. Uh, the word in are two separate letters with the cutout between them, so they don't need a line. That, run the file, and you'll see. The I don't, see the any, of the eye. I don't see any place where you would need a... All right. Is it is a lowercase? I okay. like the dot. Hang on, because uh, hold on one second. All right. So here is the file. There is is in heaven, and they all. I don't. The eyes don't attach to it. I don't understand what you're talking about. It is in. All of them are distinct letters. They're all cut out. So um, run the file. Don't look at it. I can tell you that if you're just looking at the file, it's not going to look right in a lot of places. <clears throat> By the way, for you people that don't know, Keith uh, does layered designs. Keith, drop a, a, a link in... Uh, the comments to your Etsy store. I need to download that new file. Or if somebody wants to send it to me, I'll burn it on the Lasermatic now. I'll send it to you in the private chat. Oh, it looks like I can't. But I can send it to you in... Facebook. Sweet. All right. Keith just sent me a picture. Uh, because it's cut, it doesn't need a line. It blackens automatically. <coughs> I see what he's talking about. Under the hey. W. Yep. Yeah, that's cut all the way through, Keith. So it looks like there's a black line there. Oh my. Thank you to folks that uh, placed a couple orders on my website. That's awesome. I sent it to you, Patrick. Thank you, sir. Cool. Okay, so uh, Scott's saying that he's going to send me something by messenger. Uh, I don't get private messages from general public. So that's probably why it didn't go through. I've only got like five people in my messenger or else it would be, you know, <laughs> thousands of messages there. Yeah, yeah, you'd have way too many. Uh, so Scott, let me see if it's in my business account. Yeah, I do see it in my business account. Yeah, you can make anything you want. Uh, I know that Rolly Automation is already working on a motorized Z. So uh, they're, they're working on a...
complete redesign of the entire laser. So. Yeah, the video didn't come through, Scott. Yeah, I was actually going to make this cross and give it to my wife for Christmas. And I forgot to separate out these quotes. So it's scanning all the way across all that white space. And every time I do this, I say to myself, I'm going to separate that in a light burn file. Maybe I should work on that while this is, this is running. Because this job is taking much longer than it should. It's taking almost as long as the cutout did. helps just ungrouping them should do the trick 27 minutes and 32 seconds that what speed were you running your line on the lasermatic speed and power um hang on one second uh it's in the library Patrick. Ah, okay cool Oh, order by layer, order by, okay, so I'm going to uh, order by layer, order by priority, remove, remove. No, time hasn't changed at all. You look at the preview. Still scanning the white space. Okay. What did I change? I must have changed something in my optimization settings. Focus. Focus, focus. Talk to you later, Jeremy. Okay, so if I put those onto another layer, put those on 17. Seventeen. Seventy five hundred. We are burning to learn today, folks. BTL. We've done projects of different BTL ratings. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the 317? Right. Okay, so I fixed that problem. Let me show you. I, I'm going to show you what I did in Lightburn. So uh, what I did here in Lightburn was I put all of the vertical quotes on one layer and all of the horizontal quotes on another. And now I went from 27 minutes to 11 minutes or almost 12. So a uh, big difference. No white space scanning. See that? And yep. bump up the speed. What what did you say you did first? I I put all of the vert the one you see cutting out now, the engraving mm -hmm. now, the vertical text onto another layer. Ah, gotcha. Now there's there's zero white space scanning. And if I show the traversal move, see that? Nothing. This this is as optimized as you can possibly get. See, this is why I have th thumb screws on my riser leg. 
Maybe I can scoot this thing around and they don't fall off the chip. That even bounced over top of the cord. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had, I, I don't have the thumb screws and I was putting the exhaust hose back on the back of it the other day. And one of the legs actually went over the edge and fell off. <laughs> so, and then when yeah, I said, when I set it down to pick up the other leg, the back part lifted up and the back leg on the opposite side fell off. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It was not fun. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, you know, my friend uh, Mike, that's got the handle, stumbling, bumbling idiot. Yep. Sometimes I think that should be my handle. Uh, I feel like that quite often. <laughs> like, I used to be coordinated. What has happened to me? Uh, Keith, uh, this that's is a this is one of the shop computers, so I'm running 1.4. Uh, I'm running 1.5 on the uh, office computer. Well, thank you so much. Always dropping great content. Thank you. I appreciate that. Did they release version 1.405? Uh, I believe it's 1.404. If I'm uh, not. Oh, five, oh five's out. I think. I haven't restarted. Out. I haven't restarted this computer in a week. So. Yeah, I think it just came out. And the bugs are still getting worked out of. Uh, 1.5. In fact, I submitted uh, two bug reports just yesterday. So I'm finally coming down to the cut here, and I'll be able to show you guys um, the difference in the text. And I did do this text at 3.18, but I can get a seriously dark test text if I do it at 500 uh, LPI. Yeah, if you uh, if you close Lightburn and then restart it, or if you click Help, check for updates. Either way. You can get the latest version. I just haven't restarted this shop computer in about two weeks because of, well, Patrick knows, because of a blunder that I made. <laughs> I can show you really quickly. Oopsie. This, this is my uh, computer that I have here in the shop. And you see that it's standing up vertical. Well, um, dummy me when i first set it up i laid it down on its side where those two fans are that you see there and blocked all of the air intake so uh this computer i bought in may and since may it's had no air circulation and i burned out one of the drives <laughs> i i just didn't think that that was I didn't pay attention when I was setting it up. I'm trying to maximize space and I laid it right down on the air intake. And we are finally getting down to that cut. Yep, Steve, we already got that 1.405. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey, Jerry. Did uh, did Keith ever... Po Keith, did you post a link to your store? I don't see it. The Etsy store? Keith's got some cool stuff. Patrick, a link... What's that? Links? Are, are, are links blocked by people that are watching? Shouldn't be. No, I don't see it, Keith. Well, maybe you guys are seeing it, something. It I might have. 
Well, let me let me take a look. I don't see the link. Nope, it didn't show up. Uh, Keith, message that to me in Messenger, and I'll post it, please. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Give me a message, and I'll gladly post it. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to choose that one. Wow, that's got a lot of... <laughs> That is a huge link. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Stupid Facebook. I don't know what it posted two different links. It's, I think it's going to be the, the bottom one. Actually, let me click on the link because that it's probably, yeah, that's what it did. I've uh, got it. Did you remove I've... all the referrer stuff? Yeah. There we go. Yep, that's exactly what I just did. Oh, okay, my thing is finally finished. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, as you can see on my screen, I forgot to turn on my theme extraction, too. <laughs> Whoops. It's a little smoky in here. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to switch cameras. Let me go into full screen here. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to see because the inside's all dusty now. Yeah, hang on one second because I'm going to show the <laughs> results of the. Uh... Well, yeah, while you're doing that, I'll. Uh clean my screen, so screen cabinet. here is the base let me see if i how far i can zoom there we go there's the base the bottom level you can see how nicely the uh text came out and the way i designed this was so that uh you put four dabs of glue right here and a little circle of glue in the middle you can use Plain old 50 cent, 45 cent Elmer school glue. I also use a Pell as long as it's clear. And drop this one on top, put you a couple of clamps on it. And then with the two clamps on it, get it perfectly aligned with that text. So the text is an alignment tool so that uh, you can align it perfectly. And then once you've got that perfectly aligned, Put your top piece on here. Let that tack for uh, about two or three minutes. Then you can take the clamps off, put some more glue on here, put this one right on top, and then reclamp it again. And after it tacks, it's important that you wait for it to tack because when you put more clamps on there, it makes the wood move. So uh, after you allow two or three minutes for each layer to tack, before you put the next layer on. And then once two, three, four, five minutes have gone by, when you finish with the top layer, then you can put clamps all the way around it and it'll be perfect. But I put all of these little sayings, there's a father's prayer, there, there's the, the Trinity around that layer. I put all of those on there for a reason, for alignment purposes. And uh, that will give you a perfect glue up if you've, follow those uh, instructions, which is my method of how I glue layers. I glue all layers one layer at a time. You hammer those down? And then hammer them when you're finished, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, one, more, one more thing. I did want to do a close-up of those letters. This is in 318 DPI, um, but I've done some in 500 that came out really, really nice. Look how 
Uh, can't get too close with this camera. It's yeah. Focus. I can just, I can see it. It looks good. But it's really nice at 318. If you bump up to higher than that, then the lines stop, start overlapping. It's sort of like doing multiple uh, scans. And but you can you can do it much much darker without doing multiple passes just by increasing your LPI. If you went up to 600 LPI, it would be the same thing as doing like uh, two passes. Yep. <coughs> Take that's about a, that's what I that's what I normally do. If I if I well it is what I do. If I want it darker, I start squeezing those lines together. So Keith is saying that uh, he would take that layer and then offset it inward and then score it. Yeah, it, it, if you don't want to have the text on there, you can do that. Uh, you know, that's that's the easy thing to do. Uh, you want to offset it outward. If you offset it inward, you'd never be able to align it properly. You never know exactly where. I guess you could when the line disappears. I guess that would work. Everybody does it differently. That's right. <laughs> Everyone does these things differently. That is, that was my method that I explained that works for me. And uh, Patrick is, oh, he's doing the same file. Yes, I am. So you can see all of those. Uh, it does all, uh, if, if you have your priority right, <laughs> it does all of the black first. Always make sure that the black layer is on top. Yep. I, I, it just impresses me how fast this 30 watt cuts. Yeah. So the only thing, what, what, if you're not using hardwood, which neither one of us are here, uh, you, you may not get every single piece to cut through like you saw earlier with those three or four anomalies that I had on the first job. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a hardwood, it's not going to be an issue. But if you're using plywood, it may be an issue. Yeah, this is the Freiler Baltic Birch. Yeah, this is not the one that I did. It's not Freiler. It's another company. So it's the first time I've ordered it, and I just ran with the settings that I had for the Freiler which worked perfectly actually it uh, looks like the settings could have been less and well i guess while i'm while we're just sitting here we may as well just keep working that's what we're doing today is just working in the shop yep we'll show you what i was talking about on this other camera what i do Now, of course, I didn't uh, brush this off yet, so I want to do that first. Put that in. Touch it. I always uh, brush off the the dirt and the debris with the regular. Uh, paintbrush and I know lots of people on most channels are going to tell you to get out the sandpaper don't do it <laughs> if you don't touch it and get the oil from your skin on there it's going to brush right off uh, let's see that's what I wanted to check Processing. Uh, no, that one's done. That, that's right. 
I am going to get started printing a set of legs for the gentleman that ordered a little bit ago. Oh man, again, orange. Orange is the post most popular color. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It is. During this uh, tech period, you can see I'm, I've, I've been able to move it all around to get it perfectly lined up with the uh, with the text with my thumbs. I just move it around with my thumbs. And I think I am pretty close to perfect here. A couple quick little more adjustments. And being that I was uh, doing this way up in the air like that I, I put it in the wrong spot to begin with so got a little bit of glue on here doesn't matter because I'm using the Elmer's glue so it dries clear so it's not a problem it doesn't matter but now I'll just leave that one for now to dry for about two or three minutes and after two or three minutes it'll be tacked enough where I can do the next layer <laughs> oh, and actually, you can you can really see the the text a lot better in that at that angle. And if you look the clamp that's on your the right side, see how far off it is. Uh, that's how far I moved it with my thumbs. You know, just moving it around. Yeah, moved a good bit. Uh, you can't seem to find the OF file on my site. The site is engrave and cut files.com. There, I posted the link. Okay. Now it's time. I got to get this thing ready. What you getting ready? This. Oh. Oh, that's a customer's? Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. I've got to do a, a stipple job on the grip. Well, you may as well get it. I mean, this is not a scheduled live stream. We're just... Nope. We're just hanging out doing stuff today, so we decided, for those of you that have joined us since then, uh, we just decided uh, to go live. <laughs> yep, hang out and see what everybody else is into. I am waiting for glue to dry. Uh, no, Andy, it's not, the updated file is not on uh, Patreon yet. I can't sign into Patreon from this computer. But I will, by the end of the day, uh, just just go like tonight after 6 p.m. Central Time. It's right now 4.40. Uh, so just go on Patreon after 6 p.m. and download the file again. I'll put the update on there. And I am waiting for glue to dry. <laughs> I love that. Like sort of waiting for paint to dry. Any difference? Uh, and I do have to cut out some more bases, so I may as well do that while I'm waiting. Might as well.
my air conditioner finally figured out it's hot in here. Finally turned on. Starting to cool off. Ah, so now I've got the new file done here. And this should take one third the time now. This should be perfectly set up. We're about to find out. Found a find out. Jeez, what the heck? So we're gonna we're going from I don't know how I screwed up the optimization settings, but we were at like 32 minutes before, and now it's down to 11. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a big difference. Just by putting so the those. first first thing you got to do before you do a stipple job is make sure you take the mag release out. Anybody need a tutorial on removing the Glock mag release? I, I used to be a Glock certified armor, but I let my certification expire. My two minutes is up. And you can see now that that warp is gone in the wood that was warped earlier the two sides were sticking up good old elmer i, I love this glue if you're doing indoor projects there's no need to use anything else most wood glues are made of the same things I was, debating, I was debating on whether to try those glasses with the fiber laser, but I don't think I want to. That was actually an excellent guess. The only thing I did was put the glue too far too close to the center. So I got some in the center there, which is not good. Because I want my um, cross to be able to fit in there. Look at that. It's way too much. I don't have a paper towel. Oh, so if you do happen to get any glue in the middle there, you just want to uh, take something and get that out of there. If you still have, if they're making that mistake, you still have some issues with it later you can run a, a fine exacto blade in there and trust me i've had all these issues <laughs> trying to get as much of it out as i can that's not taking very long my uh cross is uh getting close there we go that's better I'm just going to do a little bit more alignment off camera where I can see it better. Wipe out some of this excess glue. I didn't even think of sticking the paper towel in the slot. That's an even better idea. I always use my little screwdriver, but this paper towel is working better. So now we can watch glue dry again. <laughs> more clamps ready for later i'm going to take you over here maybe
And I always talk about priority, and it looks like I screwed up this priority. It's not going to make a difference. I did. The line got put way up there because I added another layer. So on the next one, that's not going to be a problem because I just moved it down. When I added that new layer, it went uh, below the cut layer. But that's not going to be a problem. Yeah, Keith, if you use CA glue and activator, you will never get this lined up properly. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Damn it. Now you can see just how productively that laser is operating because um, I put the vertical lines on a uh, 90 degree scan. So there is absolutely no white space in this job whatsoever. Let me see where I'm at in light burn uh, laser. I'm at six minutes and 26 seconds on this job it says there's five minutes remaining. And I'm going to show you guys how I put the metal inserts into the riser legs. First, my cross is done. Perfect. Wow, that's impressive, all those little pieces falling out. The, the number one thing that I've learned about you inserting these metal inserts into your 3D printed parts is to use the um, ends for your soldering iron that are specifically made for the metal inserts. Because then the uh, plastic doesn't you don't end up uh, hitting the tip onto the 3D printed part or it's putting it in crooked. It's much easier to put it in straight. And somehow I got turned down. Is I'm on camera correctly. There we go. So once it reaches critical temperature, they push in very easily. Then I just use a thumb screw that I'm going to actually you know, ship with the legs to just push that metal insert in and make it nice and flat. Then we have a threaded insert to screw the thumb screws into. That's cool. Uh, Andy, I've uploaded that, I've updated that file on Patreon, so you can download it now. Delete the one you've got.
Kenny says uh, he has a set from when he built his rat rig. <laughs> oh, nice. And I'm going to switch back over to my other camera, which that is now tacked and ready and just put my other clamps on. And, I, you know, this I've been woodworking for many years, probably uh, 50 years, I would say. I started in school and never had a need to put 46 clamps onto a small item like that. Although somebody is going to say, it needs more clamps than that. It does not. <laughs> so that is all the clamps it's going to get is for. I've never had a glue job fail ever. So, and I don't get the uh, silicone brush and spread it all, all out or a glue roller or anything like that. I just put the glue on and put a few clamps on and that's it. I've even uh, demonstrated to a friend of mine that argued with me for a long time and glued something together and went and tried to break it apart. And uh, when I did, it did not break at the glue joint. So... And he said it was totally glued wrong. I said, well, what, what more do you need than for it to be <laughs> glued together? So uh, this will never come apart. I, I would dare you to take this apart tomorrow. You'll never get it apart. If it came up, didn't come apart at the glue joint, then what's the issue? Yeah, there is none. So uh, Johnny from Sweden is signing out. Thanks for joining us, Johnny. Thanks, Johnny. Merry Christmas to you, too. Merry Christmas. All right. I think I just heard that laser return to home. My next one is ready to get started. So I do this for every set of laserbatic legs that I sell all these one at a time just like this so I have to do more figure out which ones I haven't been cutting because they don't all fit on the same piece of wood. So we got two tops. I've got one, two, three four middles. Oh, and then I've got more over here. I was doing earlier that I forgot about. All right, so. Being quiet, I was concentrating over here. All right, <laughs> this we're done. All right, I haven't done any of the bases, it looks like. Yep, that's what I have to work on are the bases. So, now we're we still watching, we're just hanging out in the shop today. So, uh, nothing spectacular. Nothing special today, just hanging out. Mm -hmm.
Hi, Matt. Matt German's in chat. Oh, now the beast. Now, I printed off these for a customer. So these are, here's a set of stipple jigs that finished. Then I put a threaded screw in them. That made a recess for the head of the bolt. Then we end up with this. And then each side has their own little hold down piece that acts as a clamp. And then when I package them up for shipping, see if I can do this on camera without dropping them. Pop them in like this, sandwich them together. Then install a thumb screw. Nice. On each one, the thumb screw recesses down inside of the slot. If I can do it straight. And then that holds it nice and secure on its way to its new owner. See you, Jeff. Yeah, Andy, I didn't do much um, to it. Uh, all I did was added a couple of lines to make the pieces drop out easier and attach the you, on the bottom. But uh, it doesn't matter. If you have the old file, it's going to run just fine. I've already run seven, eight of them <laughs> before I even went back and changed that. So uh, there's, there's not going to be any difference it's going to run just fine i just added some more lines to it that's all thank you stacy for replying to that and uh, i'm turning everything off right now because it is dinner time here five o'clock and i'm gonna uh go in and eat dinner in a minute so I, this would be a good time for uh me to take a break and i'm sure that yep. my my uh Blew up is done now. Good time for me to take a break, too. Sorry for yelling in the microphone, but That's now it's right. completely glued up. And if I wanted to, I could now move on to... I have a bunch more that I have to glue up, which I'll do after dinner. But I can take all of these off now, and there will be no warping or anything in the in the wood. So it's, it's already set up. It's going to dry just perfectly like this. Don't have to keep the... the clamps on overnight once this wood is tacked it's finished and i'm ready to um, take and drop one of my one of my cutouts into here uh, and oh you know what this is the wrong size this is for the the uh eight by twelve and this is the 15 inch one that i did here so well whatever <laughs> when i do a smaller Can't one this base will be ready for it <laughs> Ah, and that's why I screwed up over here with these cut pieces because it's for two different sizes. I'm going to tell Kenny, if you get a powerful enough Galvo, that is a two foot by two foot piece of steel sheet. You can see by the lasermatic and the other Galvo sitting there beside it. Mm -hmm. So that was a 400 millimeter lens. And once uh, you run correction on it, it's giving about that's 16, well, 16, almost 18 inches, I think. So you can get an 18 by 18, but you just got to have a powerful enough source to drive that lens. That was on the 120, right? Yeah, actually, that was done with the 80 watt. Was it? Okay. Yep. The one okay, twice, so, uh, uh, powerful enough, it'll engrave with the 400. I don't know if you're going to hang around, Patrick, but I'm going to go nope, I'm, get dinner. My wife just messaged me three times already. <laughs> yep, I just saw it at 6 o'clock. We've been at this uh, yeah, for about I didn't even three, realize, hours. three hours now. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, and I've gotten three crosses done and a bunch of bases. So um, thank you for joining us, Stacy, Jim. Merry Christmas uh, and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, Merry Christmas, Jim. Professor Happy, Hanukkah, like happy Festivus, uh, all those different things. Whatever it is yep. that you say, happy holidays to you. Uh, let's Whatever see. you're doing, just have a happy time. Yep. Uh, hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. And Keith is saying bye-bye now. Where is he? Keith, take care. If, if you haven't been to the see store, ya. go follow that link. He's got some really nice uh, layered designs there. And Andy, good night. So Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays. And uh, we'll see you next time. Maybe we'll do more of this hanging out in the shop uh, soon. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fun. I like hanging out with you too. So that'd be good. <laughs>